This video is a short tutorial on the Panasonic Viera application. There's not a whole lot of information on the web regarding instructions for the application. So maybe after watching this video you'll have a better grasp on how to use the application and get the maximum functionality from it. Uh, it's not a bad application. It's got a lot of potential. Uh, there are some bugs with it. Uh, I've had some issues with it freezing. Hopefully today while recording this video I won't have any trouble with it. But anyways, you need to go ahead and download it from iTunes. It's a free application. It shouldn't take too long to download. I don't think it's too big. Um, but once you've got it downloaded, I've already actually have it installed on my phone. Uh, you need to go into your settings and you want to make sure Wi-Fi is turned on. That is, the Wi-Fi is how the application communicates with the television is through your Wi-Fi network. Um, so one of the requirements of the app to work correctly is Wi-Fi in your home. I think almost everybody's got Wi-Fi now though. Okay, now that you have Wi-Fi enabled, you can see up in the top left-hand corner the Wi-Fi icon is on the iPhone. Uh, the next thing you want to do is go ahead and open the application. So let's go ahead and do that. Oh, whoops. Didn't mean to do that. Um, sometimes it takes a few seconds to load. It, it's not too bad. But anyways, here's the first screen, the home screen. Uh, this is for cursor. If you see in the left-hand side in the very bottom, it says cursor. This is basically the cursor screen. You can use this uh, for the smart TV applications, uh, for the mouse functionality. Uh, it's pretty handy. There's also some different buttons up here. Viera Tools, basically the same thing uh, as the Viera Tools button on your actual remote, a return, an option. Pretty self-explanatory. Um, the next icon at the bottom, uh, second to the left, is Remote. So if you click on Remote, uh, you can see here uh, you've got a channel selection, a volume up and down, input, a mute, uh, some of these different colored buttons with their different functionality. Um, I don't have time to go into these different colored buttons. They're a little odd, but anyways, um, those are the basic controls. Um, you're probably wondering where are the rest of the buttons for the remote. Well, you've got to swipe to the right to get to them. Uh, so what you do is just swipe over. Here's some of the other buttons for the remote. Um, some of the other functionality here. 3D settings. Viera Connect. Um, number pad. Some play and pause functionality for like a Blu-ray player. Um, so pretty basic stuff uh, once you figure out how to use it. Um, let's go back down to the bottom menu in the center is the browser if you see so I'm going to go ahead and click on that uh, what this menu does is it brings up like a mobile browser uh, it's default to google.com uh, this is handy if you maybe you have people over and you want to share a web page on your television maybe it's just easier like that like I don't know, you have your buddies over and you want to show a fantasy football stat or something like that. Uh, what you do is you basically kind of just, you know, put your thumb on the actual web page and slide up. You can see the little icon slid up and the actual web page will display on the television. I know you can't see my television right now, but uh, it did show up. Uh, the browser is pretty basic. It's it's nothing too great. I, I don't think that they've got Flash worked out on it yet still. Um, it, it, it has about as much functionality as a mobile browser. It's, it's nothing too great. But it's there. It, it's kind of neat. I think it's pretty neat. Uh, anyways, let's go back down to the bottom menu. If you want to take a look down at the bottom, it says Media. I'm going to go ahead and click on that. Uh, see here it says video and image. Uh, these actually access the uh, pictures on my phone, or if you had an iPad, it take you know access the, the 
picture library on your iPad um, and also has a video so um, let's take a look here inside my, my video library um, and here in just a few minutes just a minute or two all my videos will populate and you can actually display these on your TV so let's see here it looks like I've got some different concert footage so you, know, you kind of scroll down let's see this looks kind of interesting uh, you know, you find a video and you know you put your thumb or your finger on the actual video and you slide it up just like you did the web page and that'll show up on your television. Uh, I find the video quality is pretty high. Um, I've got an iPhone. I, I'm pretty happy with the quality and the quality that is shown on the television is pretty good. Um, it works the same way uh, with the, with the images. You know, I've got different pictures I've taken, and you can show those on TV screen too if you want. Um, and let's see the last. Let's go again down to the bottom menu. On the bottom right hand side, it says more, right next to media. If you're watching, I'm gonna go ahead and click on that. There's some different options here. Um, there's a, a cursor calibration here. Um, I haven't really messed with that too much. Um, there's a, a keyboard. Um, a lot of times, if you're using your TV, the actual uh, browser that's uh, installed on the television, it, it's easier to go ahead and type the address on your phone or your iPad. And let's see, I'll, I'll demonstrate this for you. Let's see, google.com. Once you've got that typed in, you want to click. If you see right where I typed at, I know I can't point at it with my finger, but uh, it shows a little arrow with a keyboard. You, you hit that button, and it takes the address or whatever you typed, and it puts it in the text box you have highlighted on the web browser. Makes things a lot easier. I'll show you again. I don't know. Just go to a popular web page like YouTube.com. You can type it in. And then below the text box on the right hand side, there's a keyboard with an arrow. You hit that and it'll send it up in the text box if you've got the web browser up. Uh, so, uh, pretty neat. Um, there's a gamepad control. I, I, to be honest with you, I really haven't messed with it too much. There's some games that you can play on the Viera Connect. I thought they looked a little dated and hokey, but you know, hey, you know, you might get some pleasure out of playing those. I don't know. Um, there's some settings. Um, you know, some calibration. Some, you know, kind of. It, it does make the application makes kind of like some. Goofy noises, you can turn that on and off. I turn it off. Um, there's a vibration. Like, if you don't turn this off, your your phone or your iPad will vibrate every time you make a selection with the remote. It's kind of annoying. I turn it off. Um, this right here, I'm not quite... I think this is uh, the text box with the typing on the phone, I believe. Um, so that's about that's about it. For my tutorial, uh, if you have any questions, feel free to comment, criticisms, if I did something wrong. <laughs> um, but anyways, hopefully this helped you out and made things a little bit easier.